Greetings, everyone. Hope all of you are having an absolutely fantastic day. I think it's finally time to get into my build for Commander High Slander, the heretic pyromancer that I've been using during our live stream. Please note, this build will differ from what I've been using in the live stream because I never actually sat down to figure out how I was going to do it. So now that I've pulled through all the mechanics, I'm going to respect the character probably on the next stream to make sure it's consistent with what I've decided is effective. Also keep in mind that this build is based upon you using a team of Adira, Heinrichs, uh, Cassia, Marazai, and Jay. So I'm not going to have Argenta. I'm not going to have Pascal. I'm not going to have some of the characters that I know you all say you always use uh, in your party because this is a hardcore heretic run. With all that being said, let's get into it. So um, one of my subscribers, Longus, uh, also known as Camera, for those who have been around for a while, actually made this portrait for me because I wanted a black woman who had fire all around her so that it could um, be more closely represent the type of character I was going to play. So kudos to him. Really appreciate uh, the work. I think this portrait is absolutely fantastic. And for convictions, of course, we're going to do heretic. Home world is a fortress world, and it comes with the feature never stop shooting. So she's going to get stacks of this every time she kills an enemy. And then at the start of her turn, based upon how many stacks she has, she'll have a percentage chance that the next attack will cost zero action points and will not count towards the attack limit per turn. Very, very nice. So this is going to help her throw out even more Psyker abilities. We definitely want to have this. And then for the origin, of course, I'm going to be Sanctioned Psyker, and I'm going to be Pyromancer. Now, the unfortunate thing about Pyromancer is that it's very, very weak in the beginning of the game. You really aren't going to do the type of damage that's going to make a dent into enemies until around Act 2. So to start with, we're not going to delve into pyromancy or psycho abilities all that much, but over time, we're really, really going to lean into it heavy. Now, I know for most people, when they want to be a pyromancer, they're going to start with warrior because it has a lot of synergy with being a pyromancer. You can get buffs based upon how many burning enemies are around you and deal uh, damage to enemies that are adjacent to you, things of that nature. But when I started this live stream, what I really, really wanted was to be a bomber. I wanted to be the type of character that could just throw out huge amounts of damage from long range. And so I want my archetype to reflect that. And so instead, we're going to pick soldier. Now, in that same vein, when we look at the uh, characteristics, I'm going to put a bonus into ballistic skill because, again, Pyromancer is weak in the beginning. So we're really, really going to have to lean into those um, soldier mechanics with guns at first. But then we're also going to put 10 points into willpower because, obviously, long term, we're going to play heavy into Psyker. And then we're also going to put 10 points into agility because there are multiple buffs that will help Psykers um, that soldier provide provides which scale off of agility and it's going to help ensure that our psyker goes very early in the turn rotation all right so now that we've covered level one let's go ahead and get into the archetype and starting with soldier we're going to have run and gun which is going to allow us to do an extra attack that costs one less action point and it does not count towards our attack limit per turn. We'll also receive some additional movement points that scale with our agility bonus. This is absolutely fantastic. It means every other turn, you'll be able to use two Psycho Powers, and because we have never stopped shooting, we'll also sometimes be able to use three Psycho Powers, which obviously is a very big deal. Next up, we'll be able to choose our skill, and all of these skills are actually covered by my team. I'm going to go ahead and specialize in awareness because it doesn't hurt to have more than one character on the team with high awareness, so why not? And then next at level three, you're going to get Revel and Slaughter. When I kill three or more enemies, I'll get the option to spend one action point and select this ability, which will give me a plus 10 bonus to ballistic skill and a bonus to critical damage and critical hit chance that scales with my agility bonus. Very, very nice. Definitely want this. 
Next up is Firearm Mastery. This is going to be important in Act 1 because, again, your Psycho abilities are very, very weak up front, so you are going to use this, but then after probably the middle of Act 2, you're not going to use it anymore. So it's going to give you the ability to make extra attacks equal to your weapon's rate of fire. And until the end of your turn, the first attack against a new enemy automatically scores a critical hit, and using this automatically reloads your weapon. Now, I recommend that you put a sniper rifle in a high slanderous hands and that's going to help to ensure you can hit any enemies that are on the field and just in general snipers are really really powerful in this game it does mean that you're not going to get as many extra attacks with this heroic act as you would with some other weapons but i still think it's the way to go and then for our first talent, we're going to take Unpredictable, which is going to give additional critical hit chance that scales with our agility bonus. Even more importantly, this bonus is doubled against enemies from which she is protected by cover. She'll be in cover all the time, especially in Act 1, so this is really nice. Next, you get to choose a characteristic. Again, at first, we're going to lean heavily into Soldier, so we're going to go ahead and take Ballistic Skill. For your next talent, take Camaraderie. This is going to allow you to deal additional damage for each adjacent ally, and this extra damage scales with your Ballistic Skill bonus. Even at the very beginning of the game, it'll translate into a 9% bonus per ally, so that means if you have one on each side and one behind you, it's a 27% bonus that is absolutely nothing to gloss over. Next, you get to choose your first ability, and I would actually use this as an opportunity to go ahead and unlock Biomancy. Again, you're not going to be using Psyker abilities at all in Act 1, so there's no real advantage for trying to dive into Pyromancy abilities right now. Next, after that, you can't increase Ballistic Skill anymore, so I would go ahead and start increasing Agility. Again, Soldier has multiple abilities that scale off Agility. And then for your first common talent, I would take Never Stop Believing. When you use Never Stop Shooting, usually your stacks are supposed to be completely lost. But with this talent, instead, the stacks will just become equivalent to half of your willpower bonus, which is obviously very useful to help make sure it keeps stacking. For your next talent, take Second Skin, which is going to allow you to use medium armor without reducing your damage. Absolutely, this is going to help keep your defenses high. For your first Heroic Act upgrade, I would choose the third option, which is going to make your attacks 20% harder to dodge and give you additional 10% armor penetration until the end of combat. This is absolutely useful for your Cypher Rifle. And then for your next talent, I would take enough bullets for everyone. This will give your second attack additional damage that scales with your agility bonus. All right, now for your next characteristic bonus, you could increase agility again, but you only get two more characteristic bonuses for this archetype, and we want to make sure that we don't lose any potential willpower increases, so instead, I would say go ahead and increase willpower. And then for your next ability, we're almost to the point where it makes sense to start focusing on Psyker abilities more, so I will go ahead and take Firestorm. This Psyker power only impacts creatures suffering from warp, born, or burning, and everyone adjacent to the target point suffers the effects of the Ignite Psyker power, which we'll talk about in a bit. On the same level, you can no longer increase awareness, so I will go ahead and just increase Medikai, make sure you're able to heal yourself with no issues. And then for your next common talent, I would take Nimble, which is going to increase your ability to dodge. For your next talent, I would take Psy Rating 1, which is going to cause all your psychic powers to be more powerful. And then the next talent I would take is Stabilizing Factor. The first psychic power used each turn increases Veil Degradation by 2 points less. So all psychic powers increase Veil Degradation, and doing this can have very, very negative effects, up to and including summoning powerful demonic creatures that you'll then have to defeat on top of whatever enemies you were trying to deal with. So you want to keep Veil Degradation low, and we want to take this even before we start really using these powers, so it's nice to go ahead and pick this up. Keep in mind, Veil Degradation will be an even bigger issue for my group, since I have both High Slanderer and Adira in the same group at the same time. Not to mention Heinrichs, who even though he doesn't use Psyker powers offensively, he still has buffs that he's going to utilize, so he can impact Veil Degradation as well. 
For your next talent, I would take Second Sight. For all psychic powers that have a range of two cells or more, their range is going to be increased by your perception bonus. So usually because of this talent, you wanna focus on increasing perception and it's gonna help you to hit those long range targets. But on my team, Adira is the person who's going to deal with those long range targets and High Slanderer is really only concerned with the enemies that are right in front of her. So I'm not concerned with making perception higher. And then for your final heroic act upgrade, I would take the second option, which is going to increase your rate of fire by 30%. You might say that you want to take the fourth option, which is going to increase the damage of area attacks, but you'll get a staff that has a pyromancy heroic act you can use. So honestly, after a little bit of act two, you're never going to use firearm mastery anymore. So this doesn't really help you. All right, so now we're into our second archetype, and that means we're about to start Act 2. And shortly into this act, it's really going to make more sense for you to start using your Psyker abilities. You automatically get Ignite at level 1 when you pick Pyromancy. But again, the damage it does was so low that it didn't make sense to even go over it. But when you use this against one enemy, it's going to suffer damage that is up to either 1 plus 5 times your Psy rating or your willpower bonus plus five times your Psy rating. So once you get your Psy rating up to two, this is gonna make a lot more sense and it can really help you to spread burn around to your enemies. This attack has armor penetration that scales with your Psy rating as well. And it can cause enemies to get the warp burn effect, which means it's going to deal damage at the start of the enemy's turn that scales with your willpower bonus and your side rating. And again, it has the same amount of armor penetration. The target must pass an agility resistance test with a penalty that scales with your Psy rating in order to stop the burning. So as you can see, your Psy rating plays a huge part in how much damage you deal with Ignite and pretty much any pyromancy power that you have. So getting it up to rank two is really, really necessary for you to have any sort of effectiveness with your powers. All right, so now let's get into the second archetype and it's going to be Bounty Hunter. Bounty hunters are able to mark their enemies as prey, and depending upon the difficulty tier, you'll get certain bonuses when that prey is killed. If the difficulty tier is 1 through 2, then you'll get 25% of your maximum wounds as temporary wounds. If it's between 3 and 4, then you'll get an increase to critical damage and critical hit chance that is 5 times and 2 times the prey's difficulty tier, respectively, and these bonuses last until the end of combat. If the difficulty tier is five or above you're going to get both bonuses so absolutely this is a fantastic buff to have and you're going to have three of these charges at the start of combat we're also going to make adira a bounty hunter so at least six enemies should have prey on them and just like operatives um exploits can be used between them Prey can be used between different bounty hunters. So really, Commander High Slanderer and Adira, they're going to feed off of each other. For your first ability, we're going to take advantage of Biomancy and pick up Enfeeble, which is going to cause enemies to have a penalty to their strength and agility, and all damage against them is increased. This is a great way to ensure that multiple enemies take the full brunt of the Psyker abilities that you use. Next up is Savor the Kill. Whenever prey that is not being trailed is killed by an ally, the bounty hunter gains an extra turn with half of their movement points and action points. The bounty hunter cannot attack during this extra turn. Now, at this time, this cannot attack section says you cannot use weapons, which means psyker abilities can be used during the extra turn. I don't know if that's the intention. It might be that this is considered a bug and Alcat is going to patch that out. Even if they patch this out, Pyromancer gets an ability that's not an attack that will still deal damage to enemies that are burning. So this extra turn can easily be a way for you to spread around more of the pain or you can use bonuses and do things in preparation for laying down more fire abilities. So either way, it's absolutely great to kick things off with this. Next up, you'll get the Wild Hunt Heroic Act. Again, you're never going to use this. Instead, you're going to use the Pyromancy Heroic Act. And then after that, you're going to get an increase in action points. Obviously, this is fantastic for your action economy. Your ability to increase characteristics has been refreshed, and now we are to the point that we can really, really start focusing on Psyker abilities. So we're going to start with Willpower instead of Ballistic Skill. 
And with your first common talent, you definitely want to go ahead and pick up Psy Rating 2, which is going to significantly increase the damage that all of your pyromancy powers do and just really make you a whole new character. With your next talent, pick up Biophysical Distortion. It's going to cause all your psychic powers to now deal poison damage to enemies, which is going to deal 3 plus 3 times your Psy Rating Toxic Damage at the start of each enemy's turn. Obviously, this is going to really help you pump out as much damage as possible. For your next ability, I would have you take Inflame. Until the end of combat, all burning conditions will deal two times your Psy rating more damage. Every burning creature in combat immediately suffers damage. The Pyromancy Psyker ability you're probably going to use the most comes from a staff. And so because of that, I'm not recommending you take Molten Beam right now, which would be another way for you to attack with um, fire powers but if for some reason you don't have that fire staff by now obviously you would want to take molten beam here or actually even at the second level of bounty hunter you might take molten beam instead of enfeeble if somehow you still haven't picked up a fire staff yet but you should have one uh definitely by this point for your next talent, take Deterioration. Whenever an effect applied by you increases the damage suffered by a target, this effect is increased by half. So for example, a 20% increase becomes a 30% increase. So this is going to cause Enfeeble to debuff enemies even more. Next up, our ability to increase skills has returned. So let's go ahead and circle back to Awareness. And now we've maxed out willpower, so let's circle into agilities. This is going to help with our initiative and with our defenses, along with some of our soldier bonuses. And for your next talent, pick up Backdraft. Whenever you use a psychic power and it deals damage, a random enemy within two cells from the initial target suffers half of this damage. Absolutely, this is going to help you spread around the damage in large groups, which enemies are oftentimes packed into. And then for your next talent, pick up Sparks of the Greater Flame. All damage over time effects applied by you gain a 5 plus 5 times your Psy rating percentage critical hit chance. And this chance is increased by all bonuses to critical hit chance. Obviously, you should be burning enemies left and right. And so this is really, really going to help your damage output. For your next talent, take Psychic Barrage. Whenever you use a damaging psychic power on targets that are 6 cells or farther from you, the targets are going to suffer additional damage that scales with your ballistic skill bonus. At the next level, you can no longer increase awareness, so go ahead and increase Medikai. For your next talent, get Psy Rating 3. It's going to cause your Psyker abilities to be even more powerful. And for your next ability, take Warp Speed. It's going to increase your movement points and your agility, but even more importantly, it's going to give you one extra action point until the end of combat. For your next talent, take It Will Not Die, which is going to increase your wounds by half of your character level rounded up. By this point, you're probably front and center in the group, being the first one to lay down all of the pain. So if something goes wrong and enemies are able to attack, you'll oftentimes be the first one targeted. So the extra wounds will definitely help you. And then on the next level, you can no longer increase agility. So go ahead and switch over to ballistic skill. And for your next talent, take fire within. Every time you kill or score a critical hit against eight creatures in one combat, your next attack will cause zero action points and will not count towards the attack limit per turn. Technically, if you stack this with your other bonuses, you could potentially get four attacks in one turn, but you probably wouldn't have enough action points to pull this off, but still, it's definitely very, very nice to have. For your next talent, take Blazing Inferno, which is going to increase your critical hit chance until the end of combat every time you deal damage by any means. All right, and now finally we are at Exemplar. By now you should be an absolute beast. So everything here is icing on the cake. As usual, there are links in the description for my spreadsheet of all these talents and abilities, along with my breakdowns of the mechanics for Soldier and for Bounty Hunter and for Psyker mechanics in the game overall. I will just say that I feel like your first Exemplar talent should probably be pyromancy but unfortunately all of the psychic awakening talents in exemplar seem to be broken right now the prerequisites can't be achieved no matter what kind of character you take but once they are available it's going to allow you to increase your psi rating by one which obviously is a big deal and would make you that much more powerful 
But since that's not available, I would probably recommend that you go ahead and start with Cataclysm, which is going to increase all the damage dealt by you uh, by 3% until the end of combat for every new enemy damage uh, during combat. Obviously, that's definitely going to be a big deal. Keep in mind that Malign Influence, which is absolutely a must-have for uh, Cassia and some other psychers, will not help your character because even though you're triggering resistance tests, a pyro abilities are an agility resistance test, not willpower. So this uh, exemplar talent will not help your build. All right, and finally, let's go over the items. Keep in mind, I did a dogmatic run. So this is all speculative. When I've actually finished a heretic run and I have her outfitted properly, I'll probably do another video walking back through how I feel about the overall build and some of the items that I ended up using. Uh, so starting at the head, I think you get this as part of like free DLC, but it just increases her resolve by one whenever she kills an enemy. Obviously, that's very useful. And then in the necklace slot, every time she uses Revel in Slaughter, it's going to increase her perception by 10 until the end of combat and this stacks. So obviously, this is a great way to make up for the fact that we're not increasing perception and it's going to help make more of her talents long range. Uh, for the armor slot, she is wearing medium armor, 60% armor, and is going to give her one action point after killing an enemy once per round. Obviously, very nice. Um, then she also, in one of her ring slots, is going to increase her lore warp by 25, which isn't, which doesn't really matter. But since she's heretical, uh, her and all allies gain 20% dodge and armor, but the, we do lose 9% of our maximum wounds, which you shouldn't be getting hit anyway, so that's not a big deal at all. This is great stuff. Uh, didn't see good um, gloves for a heretic player, but again, if I had done a full playthrough uh, with this, I'm sure I would have found some. For the coat, we've got pack of reagents, which is going to increase the damage of my burning effects by two. Very, very nice. And in addition, the boot are going to cause the damage from burning effects to increase by three whenever I'm standing on burning cells. And I cannot suffer the burning effect when I'm walking over burning cells. So just all the way around, this is going to help to ensure that I don't end up hurting myself with all of the effects that I'm spreading around. And then finally, of course, the core part of this build and really any pyro build that is ranged based, um, you're going to need an infernal staff. So I have the solar staff, which I think is the final version of this. So all of the stats will have a specific power level and the power level is going to affect the damage of the abilities that you get with it. And for every two creatures that are suffering burning, it's going to increase the power level of the staff and your willpower bonus is increased as well. So at a base level, the um, willpower bonus is 15, but obviously this will get larger. And this is one of the stats that gets better and better as you get more powerful versions of this staff. Now the regular attack that it provides is Inferno, which attacks every creature uh, within a one cell cone. And it's going to unleash flaming projectiles and the amount of them is going to be equal to the staff's power level. And then each of these projectiles is going to deal damage that scales with your Psy rating and your Psyker's staff power level. I don't think you can find any of these staffs in Act 1, but you should be able to get them very, very early in Act 2. And it's, again, it's going to really help your build. And then once these projectiles hit enemies, uh, if they're hit by two or more of the projectiles, they'll get the warp burn effect, uh, which is going to, of course, cause burning damage that again scales with your willpower and your Psy rating. So absolutely, this is a must have. And then even more importantly, it's going to give you a heroic act that's going to make use of your pyromancer ability. So the heroic act is a very similar effect, but it's just on steroids. So instead of releasing flaming projectiles that are equal to your stats power level, it'll be equal to twice your stats power level. And the amount of damage that it deals is significantly increased as well. And there's a chance that the projectiles will fly in a different trajectory than what you've set for them. But with the heroic act, you have a much better chance that the projectiles are going to go exactly where you want them to go. So again, just uh, all the way around, 
fantastic to have. There are a bunch of uh, different versions of this staff throughout the game. So you should be able to very quickly get one. And it's absolutely a requirement for this build. Remember as well, if worse comes to worse, you can always throw a fire grenade, which is going to cause burning in an area and on enemies for a certain amount of rounds. And I definitely recommend you have Grenadier on multiple party members so they can make use of this to give you an immediate boost to damage right off the bat in combat. And that's the build. That's what I plan to roll with. So definitely, definitely looking forward to going through the game with this build and seeing its effectiveness. Again, once I finish the Heretic run, I'll circle back and let you know how it went. But let me know your thoughts about this build down in the comments. Hope you all enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.